What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for listening to Your Ex Drinking Buddy. My name is Brennan Tassif. I'll be your host. Subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Check out the merch store at brennantcomedy.com slash merch dash store. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube as well. We'll put the shorts up there, the full video, the whole thing. Thank you so much for listening. I really just, I love it. I hope you love it. Subscribe on Patreon too. We do bonus episodes. I do Tales from the Restaurant where I talk about celebrities I've waited on and whether they're assholes or not, which is super fun. Also, we do a pre-show banter for my other show, Cheers from the Press Box with Joe Dorville. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on over there too. Make sure you just subscribe everywhere, just all over the place. I greatly appreciate it. And if you're not leaving the mean comments, thank you for that. Maybe leave a couple nice ones. Grab me a beer and grab him a coat. We about to sit for an hour bullshit and tell jokes. And please don't mix it up, cause he done sobered up. Brandon T. Comedy on your social media feeds. And Brandon Tess, here's your ex-drinking buddy. 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 What's up, everybody? Welcome into another edition of Brennan Tassif is your ex-drinking buddy. I am your host, Brennan Tassif. If you're new to the program, quick rundown of the show. It used to be everyone's favorite drinking buddy. It's my favorite thing to do, hang out with friends, get drunk, do drugs, get in all sorts of trouble, and then reminisce about those crazy stories. Right. I am sober now, but it's still one of my favorite things to do, hang out with somebody and reminisce about the crazy old days. Mm-hmm. Most weeks I'll be joined by a guest, and this week is no exception! <laughs> all the way from New York City, Onigo McLean! Hey! going on baby what's up everything's good yeah thank good. you so much for coming on thank you for having me i appreciate it absolutely Plug- i'm still drinking though so i'm not yeah. extra drinking. I'm, <laughs> no you're I'm current drinking, drinking buddy I'm, yeah I, I didn't drink in two days though oh good for you not these last two days <laughs> <laughs> it was two days before it was like 2020 <laughs> It was two days in 2020. I was, I was so good. You were so proud. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not going to drink anymore. But now I'm just not drinking any less. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> a way to do it. Before we get too far, plug everything because you got a lot of stuff going on. Plug everything up front. Okay. Hi, guys. So I'm Onika McLean. I have my full length comedy special that's coming out. I'm so excited about it. It's called My Time. It's coming out August 1st. August 1st. So I hope you guys take a listen it's going to be dropping on youtube and then other streaming platforms and it'll be linked everywhere in the show notes i'll put it on i'll link you. it to yeah of course thank you so so my my trailer is is out now so okay. let's take a look at the trailer um i'm going to edinburgh with the three queens of new york which is glory Beautiful. morta and um mika mo we're going to be in edinburgh for the whole month of august we're putting on our show the three queens of new york which is uh, a a three woman show yeah and so and when we just kind of like break it down around the subway system of new york okay. and how new york has made us shaped us create help create our stories it's gonna have music character actors a little bit of intuitiveness it's gonna be fun that's awesome mm-hmm. and then you have uh, your podcast and then I have a podcast called Main Stage Podcast. I do it with my daughter. Uh, you can find it <laughs> everywhere. The clips are so funny. <laughs> Main Stage Podcast because, and, and Main Stage is just about your life is your stage. Use your voice. It's like a spinoff of my makeup, well, my lipstick line. Which Boom. Is, which is Main Stage um, Lip Gloss and Lipsticks. And uh, yeah. it's just about, it's shaped like a microphone, and it's about using your voice. It's a gentle reminder that using your voice can free you and change your life in so many ways. And and sometimes it can stifle you when you just don't use your voice. So 100%. your life is your stage, main stage. Beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Of that was course. a lot, right? I know. You got a lot. Well, you have a lot going on. You're always hustling. <laughs> you got a lot. I was like, I'm outside. I'm trying. Mm. Um. I met you when I first moved here about three years ago. Yeah. And one thing about you that I've always held near and dear to my heart was I saw you at the stand. Mm-hmm. And after the show, I came up and I was like, oh, my God, that was so good. That was so funny. And you just gave me a big hug and yeah. you were like, oh, thank you so much. And I was like, yeah, I'm a comic and I just moved here. And then you had me come and sit with you at the comics table and you introduced me to a bunch of people. Yeah. And I was always like. That's the nicest. Th- I, to be honest, I was like, oh, comedy in New York's going to be easy. Like, people yeah, are so that's nice. What you thought? Oh, well, no, just I, you me. were so sweet. I was <laughs> like, oh, if everyone's as nice, like, this is going to be easy. No, my family's from the South. Yeah. I think that that's that, what yeah. it is. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it is. And then also, I think that uh, comedy is such a single man sport, like, one, one man, you know, 
trying to do it. I feel like we just need to embrace the community a Absolutely. little bit more. I feel like comedy needs a hug. And Well, yeah. and I'm really big on that. I, I say it all the time. I'm always trying to. They, some of the mics I go to, they're always like, you're the glue. Like, you're the yeah. guy who, like, bring, you'll be like, hey, come over here. You come over here. And you got to be that for yeah. some people. Some people are here, and nobody talks to them for, for days. I know. And, and nobody t- I talks to them. Like, like physically says, hi, good morning. How, How was are your day? You, yeah. you all right? Yeah. You, you holding up? I could Keep going. Could, could you imagine if I nobody talked not. to you? Even if I have a bad set, people will come up after and be like, you'll get them next time. Like, yeah. keep going. Yeah, don't do that to us. <laughs> if we had a bad set, just, a, just a, acknowledge just it. Just avoid us like you've been doing. You know yeah. people are like, just, yeah, you don't want to talk to us anyway. The just guy that even... killed, they'd be like, oh my God, you're amazing. Oh, you were, you, keep going. Yeah, you were, yeah. Don't give up. That's my favorite is when they come up and they say, oh, I love your bit about and it's not your bit. Yeah, you're, and you're like, like, that's not me. You weren't paying attention yeah. like, at all. <laughs> so They'd be like, hey, Oprah, I'm not Oprah. What the <laughs> <hell>? <laughs> trying to get this Oprah money, though. <laughs> trying to get this Oprah money, though. Um, I, let's talk about it. So you're from the South originally or no, your no, no. I, I family's grew, from well, the South? My fam- well, I was born in the South. OK. Right. But um, I came up here when I was like two and then I went back down South and then I came up here again when I was like six. Eight. Okay, what part of the South? Uh, Rayford, North Carolina. Okay. Right, so so I went to like kindergarten and first grade in North Carolina, and then, but my my mother was here, so okay. like I went to elementary school here. So you grew high. up. I yeah. grew up in New York. Yeah. I grew up in East New York, actually. Ooh. Yeah. So like that's a different New York. That's a different. Yeah. That's a way different New York. And I went to East New York in the fourth grade, so that was and messed up because all the kids had already acclimated themselves, yep. and then I just came in and. Well, it's just, a totally different environment. And yeah, the kids were getting high and and drinking in the fourth grade. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> How, how could this be? Like he's drinking a forty. We are just we are walking eight. into class with an OE. We are, no, it's like they would like leave. At, you know, how yeah. you go out to recess. They would like sneak out to the store and go get drunk. And these were little kids. That's insane. Who? First of all, who sold the little kids forties? That doesn't even make sense. I'm just thinking about that. But that's when I found my first bully. Okay. And uh, and he tortured me from four to sixth grade. And really? Then, yeah. And then eventually, I um, I had to. The the balls to like fight him. Yeah. Yeah. He How did beat, that go? He beat the crap out of me. Oh, really? He beat the I was really <laughs> hoping for like a. I just, there was no. Yeah. There was no victory tuned him up lap. real good. He just beat me up and threw me under the car. I was like, I, yeah, maybe I should not stand <laughs> oh up for my myself. God. It's funny you say that. The same thing when I was younger, I used to get bullied a lot. And people in my family were like, just stand up for yourself. Just, and then I finally stood up for myself. And this was before my growth spurt. So I was just a little fat kid running around. <laughs> And I finally stood up for myself and just got the shit kicked out yeah, of me. Yeah, and, and I was, I was like, like, y'all don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's a terrible it's idea. Not, it's not even a terrible idea. Like, some people are get get bullied, right? You the, <laughs> yeah. you, you the one, you the bully or Some whatever. are the bullier and some, some are the, the bully. I, yeah. you, sometimes you're the bully. And so, and I it's stood up for myself and I was like, okay, this is what I have to do. I have to just start bullying people first. Yeah. So then I yeah. became the bully all in middle school. I was a bully and it was crazy because I was even shorter than I am now. I'm only 4'11". So, it, so it's just ridiculous to get bullied by this little short kid. Were you just talking shit? I was just talking crap. But I feel like with bullying, if you... You, it, it's it's all about energy. Yeah. So if you're in somebody's face, for, you're really gonna win because you they're scared now. Yeah. So then it wasn't just about talking. I would like hit people. I was like bad. Doing people up. I was like let's just do it until one day. One day this guy, uh, Clint Hill. I know that's so crazy. His name was Clinton Hill. He did not bother anybody. Yeah. And I in in science class, I was talking crap to Clinton. I was all in his face. I took his glasses and I moved them off. You just mushed his glasses <laughs> I off his, his face. Glasses off. Boy, he beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't bothering anybody, and then he you wasn't were like, "Bothering anybody?" He, sl- you know how? Well, I don't know if you you didn't go to school here, right? So nah. we have these big science tables. They were like really big. Yeah, we had those in Florida. It's the, yeah. it's the same tables that you have when you go see people in jail. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same I'm manufacturer. It's so ridiculous. We had these big science desks, and um, and it was a science class. I had Mr. Dombrowski, Clinton, um. Clinton beat the crap out of me and then he slid me off the table. <laughs> like a movie? I was like, ah. He beat the crap out like of me. Like an old western? And then I thought because I lost, you know, at least he could get in trouble. Nope. Yeah, they no. were like, no, you bother everybody. Good for Clinton. Like, wow. <laughs> so they were like, you started it? My mother came up. She was like, you yeah, beat up my kid. I was like, yeah, somebody defend me. They was like, she starts all the trouble. Wow. Like, no way. And I was like, 
Clinton didn't even get in trouble. He's probably some CEO of some yeah, somewhere. Fortune 500. Shout out no, Clinton. Shout out Clinton. And, and my bully was Sean Bishop. He died. Hmm. Uh, you know, that's what happens karma. sometimes. <laughs> I had, oh my God, I had a bit about that. There was some dude that used to mess with me and then got cancer. And I was like, yeah, karma's weird, right? <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> comics find it funny. No regular people think it's funny. They're all like, that's terrible. It's not terrible. Hello. Go, hey, karma's if real. All, if I have all these social anxieties because somebody was making me do their homework. Right. And I, I felt like I was a domestic violence victim in the fourth grade because Sean Bishop would come back drunk to, to Miss Dinowitz class. And then I would be I like. I still cannot <laughs> believe that. <laughs> he would be drunk making me do his. He was like, did you write down my homework? And I was like, yeah. yeah. And then I did it. And then one day I just pushed the desk. I was like, I'm not doing it anymore. He was like. Three o'clock. I'm fucking you up. I was like, ah. Outside. I was like, I'm ready. I wasn't <laughs> you were ready. ready. <laughs> um, so you weren't you weren't getting in uh, trouble like like you said you were just bullying kids, but you weren't like drinking and smoking and doing all that. I wasn't drinking then. and smoking. No, uh, uh-uh. uh, I wasn't drinking and smoking at all. I just was bullying because I was like, you know, I gotta get them first. Yeah. And then you feel that bully power, and you're like, wow. Yeah. This is what people power will listen feels to me. Like. Yeah, people Look at will, this. yeah, <laughs> and people will like, do what yeah. you say. So then I tried it, and then you know, you grow out of it. When, I was gonna say, when did you kind of? Uh, did you, you ever pivot from the bullying to like making jokes and like? No, I always making jokes. Okay, I was always like cutting up and doing the dozens and stuff. Yeah, but when did I pivot? Like I guess after middle school like that doesn't really fly anymore yeah yeah, because now you're mature and now you have now you want to have comp and have sex and stuff yeah your hormones (laughs) like you need a boyfriend yeah you need to stop (laughs) pushing people around you need a boyfriend this is not attractive this is not (laughs) people don't like this it's actually i went the opposite way i was bullied a lot in high school and then when i got to college and i hit my growth spurt and i was like a bigger guy Mm -hmm. i was like no i'm not doing this anymore like and so then i just then it's funny Standing up for yourself works when you're 6'1", 220 pounds. Right. But when you're like, like you said, like when you're 4'11", it doesn't work it doesn't. as well. But I started like, I started being the, um, like the captain save a hoe in a way. I okay. would, I would, I would uh, defend the underdog. Like the gay guys Aww. that would get bullied. Yeah. And the doofy girls that, that walk with their leg like this, tripping Pigeon themselves toe, yeah. all the time. <laughs> you always, because they always got to get called Big Bird and stuff like yeah. that. That's like, you shut up. You leave it a f- alone. It's and like, you just came in out of, you were a hero. I, yeah, but I was so angry. I just, I just figured a new way to fight. I was like, but now, <laughs> now if I got caught, I'll be like, they was bothering Adam. Yeah. And I was just trying to defend Adam. That's so you know what I'm Look at that it. is so smart like to be like, I want to get into a fight, but I don't want to get in trouble. So I'll look for someone who's bullying somebody else. Yes, yeah, so I just I said, You've always I said, been an entrepreneur. Mess with me. Why don't you mess with me? And I said, like, okay, I guess. Maybe not. You've always been out here. You've <laughs> always been an entrepreneur. Always finding out ways to do <laughs> stuff. Figuring it out. I was like, damn, yeah, I was a bully, but when did you uh get into stand up? Oh, very late in life. That was later, right? Yeah, very late in life. I've been, I've been doing stand up for eight years now. Okay. So so well into my adulthood. Yeah, my kids you already, were already had your guns. kids and everything. Yeah, yeah. everything is done. So wow, yeah. what brought you in? Like, were you just like, I want to try it, or? Well, I always wanted to be in the arts. Okay. But I had children really young, and I was married and all that stuff. So I put all that stuff to the side. And then when I was figuring out my life, and I was like, damn, I'm fairly successful in what I'm doing as it relates to like like the legal industry or whatever. Yeah. And then I was like, well, well, I, well, I accomplished way more than I thought I would. You know. Oh yeah. You know, you have these plans, and you're like, well, I've been. Damn, I had some low self-esteem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, that didn't even that ain't nothing. Why? What you want to do? That, oh, that, yeah. You wanted a you wanted a, a white refrigerator with double doors. This is all you want in life, That's all girl. You wanted? Girl, this is on the list. <laughs> <It's> on the <laughs> list. <laughs> this is on the list. A refrigerator, list. a refrigerator, and your stove matching. That's what you want. But okay. the double doors. <laughs> the the double. double doors. Yes, that's what happened. And then I just I I, I said, let me try a comedy class. Okay. Because I, I was doing, like, acting classes on and off. Oh, so you I, were, like, into the arts. Yeah. Like you wanted to. Yeah. Since I was a kid, I okay. loved doing it. I loved, like, theater, all that stuff. And so uh, I said, let me take a comedy class. Because I had taken theater classes and um, shot a new federal theater. I'd done that for a long time. But I didn't, like, take it anywhere. Yeah. Like, I didn't, it didn't really go anywhere. So then I, I went to uh, The Cellar has a comedy class. Mm-hmm. And uh, I took Rick Chrome's class, yep. and then I had a showcase, and then I figured out what comedy was. And when I when I figured out that comedy was a way to tell 
your truth and give people levity at the same time like it's it's a it's an acceptance thing mm-hmm. this is me being vulnerable i'm putting it right in front of your face and then you get to judge it or not and it's so freeing because it's like it's not therapy but it's really a close second yeah you when know? i say it all the time mm-hmm. i get in trouble with some com- not trouble but you know what i mean like because i'll be like oh you know this is deep like what we're doing is deeper than what people give it credit for and then you know there's always the comics who are like no nah, i'm just up here telling dick jokes and it's like well yeah that's a part of it but that's not that's not the real intention but like, well, it's a process of it yeah right and then when you get to who your real voice is no. and sometimes you're you, you cool sometimes you're real i didn't want to drop the product oh okay it's cool uh give him a second clap clap thing yeah i appreciate it yeah of course and then sometimes when you when you figure out your your real voice maybe it is the 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 dick joke yeah. but for the most part i feel like when i became the more vulnerable i am and how i start to decipher my life and what has happened and what is happening and what's happening you know at the moment yeah i'm like wow the the more transparent I am, the f- more funny it, it becomes. Well, yeah, because you have one of the first bits of yours that I heard was when you were talking about your daughter doing mm-hmm. music. Yeah. And I could not breathe. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> when you're talking about job. her lyrics versus she, her actual upbringing. Yeah. And I was like, this is probably. But again, to your point, a lot of that is rooted in truth. Right. And that's what makes it. Because so, you're like, wait, what are you saying? Yeah. And so that's something that I've always tried to do. And <clears throat> in the South where I came up, you can get away with it a little more as far as storytelling and stuff like that because, you know, people will just kind of listen. Mm-hmm. But in New York, it has to kind of be a lot quicker. Yeah. And so that's something I've tried to develop up here is not getting rid of, like, me, the truth-telling aspect of it, but mm-hmm. making it tighter. And like you said, using levity and getting mm-hmm. it funnier. Right. Because you do a great job of that where you talk about real-life stuff uh-huh. as, you know, a mother of two and, yeah. you know, as someone who was married and all this kind of stuff. And on paper, you would be like, oh, OK. But when you perform it, it's so funny. And right. it's like it all comes from that same like, no, I'm just up here saying what happened. The vulnerability. Yeah, of the it. vulnerability. Right. Because yeah. I remember when I first started comedy, I would just write out the jokes. I would write them out and I'm like, oh, this would be funny. And, you know, yeah. this is a youth arisen, and all that shit. And then when I realized if I told my story, I could remember because that's what happened. Yeah. And then when I wrote it out, I can just punch in the absurdity of it. Yeah. And and the joke. Yeah, punch it up, tag it up, yeah. Yeah, I could just tag it up, and then when I see the hole in it, I'm like, oh, okay. And so that's what my comedy is. And and I'm trying to grow it um, beyond that to my perspective also. So yeah. that's when I'll start talking about what I feel about political stuff and yeah. what I feel about, you know, the absurdity of dating and the Internet and, you know, race relations yeah. and all those things. But it still always comes back to, you know, how I was raised and what that how that view that point of view is set up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it's everybody go watch the special. It'll be in the notes. It's yeah. your comedy's great. I, I love it. You're Thank one of my you. favorite people. I wanted to ask you because you said obviously between the South and then living in New York, it's kind of two different worlds mm-hmm. growing up. Where was you, were you, were your parents very strict? Did you come from like a very like rule following kind of background or were you more Hell like no. my parents are teenagers <laughs> and they have me shout out to Beverly and duck. No, anyway, wait, shout out, <laughs> shout out to Beverly and duck. No, my parents were, were our teenagers and um, my, my dad stayed down South and my mom Moved was, was in New York. And so I would go down South for many summers. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of had the, the best or worst of wor- of both worlds and uh was it very strict it was not strict at all but my mother was like like i did get beatings and stuff yeah so it wasn't it was strict there was it, discipline but it wasn't there was discipline but it's like being disciplined by somebody that's like 15 years older than you <laughs> it's like it's like your big sister hitting you what the fuck is happening yeah. this is no structure lady <laughs> You are not providing what stability. Is going on right yeah, now. this is not. What the hell is wrong with you? Like I was saying, this is how, <laughs> this is how you raise me. This is not. You supposed to tell me why, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then you supposed, supposed to, to say learning. it's sad, and then you supposed to talk to me later and tell me like I not watch sitcoms. I watch sitcoms, mom. I knew exactly how it's supposed to be. It was not <laughs> Claire Huxtable. She was not Claire Huxtable. She was. I don't know what she was doing something, but it wasn't like that. You know, I just felt like my big sister was like, "What the fuck?" And I was like, "Wait, okay." What? 
It was that. It was that. Gosh. So when did you start uh, like party? Like when did you start drinking and smoking and like having As a good time? As an adult. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like in, well into my 30s. Oh, really? <laughs> Hell yeah. Plot I mean, twist. I mean, I, yeah, you would think that I would always. Well, not even just you. I've, I've done uh, 200 episodes of this show. Uh-huh. I've had a ton of different kind of people on from all sorts of different backgrounds. I've maybe three people I've had who started doing that kind of stuff later. I say I started that later in life, and I was 18. That's not later. Yeah, exactly. What are you talking about? You still don't even have your frontal lobe. What are you talking about? Your brain went through that. So you waited until you were 30. There's something. Yeah. Not right, like, to, like, really, probably 40. Let me tell you something. Yeah, take us through it. Okay, so, like, so my mom was younger when she had me or whatever, and she was kind of like a party woman. She, like, was a party promoter. She Like, so she had that kind of lifestyle, mm-hmm. and I never wanted it. I was okay. like, hell no, I'm not doing that. But I, in, I ended up still having that lifestyle because I was married to somebody that was dealing drugs. You know, like, yeah. I, I was in that that street environment, mm-hmm. but I just didn't partake in those kind of things. Wow, so you were around it, and you were just like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. hell no. That. But the other piece of it is, the other piece of it, if I had, like, partake when I was younger, I would probably be in jail or strung out somewhere. Yeah. Right. I feel like you can't. I feel like you gotta pace yourself. You only have a certain amount of time to beat your body up. You only have so many <laughs> drinks. I say it all the time. You yeah. only have so many drinks. And me, I drank them all yeah. from eighteen to thirty. You did. I drank it. all my drinks. No, you and now I'm out. You be like, no more. No now more. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I feel like that's what it is. So you, okay. So what was? Do you obviously this wasn't you know this was more recent than not. Do you um, remember the first time you were like, oh, I'm going to turn up, like I'm going to have a good time? So the first time that I really did uh, an edible, <laughs> it was in Vegas at a conference. Really? I was so high. This is for the yeah. for the uh, law stuff? Yeah. I was at a legal <laughs> conference <laughs> in Vegas. And legal conference, that's the right yeah, way to say it. I, yeah, I, was said le- I, I was at a legal conference in Vegas, and then they was all like doing not, I'm never going to say to people, but yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't people from my firm, it was just people. People, and, yeah. And and Doing what people do at conferences in Vegas. Yeah, it's legal. Ve- yeah, exactly. And I was so high, I couldn't even believe it. everything was. When so you first be- took it, were you like, "Oh, this is gonna be fun"? Like, take us through it because I love these little I just, details. So, so I had like like Charleston shoes or something like yeah. that, and of course, somebody said take one, and I took two, and we were in. <laughs> And we were in like a, a nightclub after the conference. You know how people just part, just nerds trying to act cool. So everybody's just like all nerdy. <laughs> Who's one there by I, far? Right, everybody's all nerdy, and I am so high. And now I'm trying to act like I'm not high because I don't want anybody. <laughs> to think And you've I'm never high. been that high. No, and I was like, oh my, everything was like electric, and my body was feeling like horny. I was like, oh shit, this is crazy. I was just looking around. I was like, what is happening? Oh my this god, this is the best thing ever i want more <laughs> i was like i want more i'm can we, can we take this home like is there can we go to the dispensary when we leave tomorrow? With us? Yeah. I, yeah and then i saw i love edibles so do you are you if you had to pick like one thing it would be edibles probably like uh, yeah from from california yeah from california because i'm i was always a big drinking guy i yep. was never a big weed person whether it was edibles or smoking and that was a funny thing in college my roommate was a big smoker uh-huh. and i was the drinker and it's not like I wouldn't smoke. It's not like I was against it. I just didn't like the feeling it gave me. It made uh-huh. me like anxious. And he didn't like to drink because he would like feel out of control. Yeah. So it was like a perfect kind of marriage almost. It would make you feel anxious. Smoking any weed of any kind. And everyone's like, oh, it's the wrong strand. It's the wrong yeah. this. It's the wrong that. But when I was using, this is obviously, you know, I've been sober six years. So uh-huh. this is before all the innovations that they've had in marijuana. Uh-huh. But every time. I would like stare out of a people like the people of my room or the building and be like just Somebody's freaking get, out. Somebody coming to get you. Yeah. I, oh my every God. time. That's crazy. Whether I was in the dorms 15 years ago at college and I would stare out of my people in the dorms or all the way up until, you know, 10 years ago when I was still smoking, I would like stare out of the front window of our apartment. Now, so for me, uh, I, I would take the edible. And then one time, I had, I don't know, I like, I'm a whiskey drinker, and I had somebody gave me, I don't know, a shot of something, and it just, it was the perfect blend. Yeah. Like, I felt like if I could just stay right here forever. Ever. <laughs> I kept saying, this is the best night ever, and everyone's like, what the fuck is she talking about? I'm having the best time. This is the like, greatest. <laughs> That's awesome. And then I was, you know, and then you think, playing it back in your mind the next day, and I'm like, well, 
nothing happened. I just sat there. And <laughs> but you were having a good time. I had the best You're time. You're feeling good. Ever. Like, and I always was a person that was against drugs. I was like, you're doing drugs. I, blah, blah, blah. I was so pissed. Like, my, when my daughter started smoking I was going to ask. So you have you have two children. So Oh, my God. You, I judged her. You I raised, sent her. Yeah, okay. I sent my daughter. She had came home from college. And she was, like, doing weed a lot, right, all the time. But when I sent her there, she wasn't doing it. Well, at least I didn't think she was. Yeah. And I was like, you have to go to a rehab. I was looking at rehab stuff. <laughs> I sent her to a rehab. I sent her to rehab for weed, and it was people in there that was on drugs, yeah. drugs, and she was pissed. I've been to a couple rehabs. Was, we make fun of the weed people. She was like, she was like, "Are you kidding me, mom?" And so you you know how pissed she is now. <laughs> I remember one time she was like, "Are you high?" Oh, like, so she. <laughs> Are you high? Are you high are right you now, high? Are you young high woman? Right are you now? high? And I was like, it's legal. It's it's legal now. I have a medical malware card. Like I, I paid the hundred dollars. <laughs> wow, that's. A, I feel like a piece of crap that. But, that is but a I huge did, turn though. Because I thought in my mind, like I come from the '90s, and when you were on drugs, it was drugs, you yeah. know. And so I just didn't want anything to do with it, and I felt like I didn't want my family to have anything to do with it either. So it was that was just my mindset. I didn't want her to go so far down the street that she couldn't come back, and I was just panicked. And I was like, "You're going to this rehab, and you're doing this, and and the rehab was so." That's hilarious. The rehab was on 14th Street. I'm so sorry, buddy. And the rehab, she didn't need to go to rehab. Is this the one that you do the podcast with? No, the do- that's oh, the, the gangster the rapper. Number. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then she pointed my I, I owe that girl so many apologies. <laughs> it's like, I feel so hard. I feel like a piece of crap. Why would you? But I, I, again, I was a You mom. didn't know. I you were a mom. I was protecting my kid. Yeah. And then I had not had it myself for real. So I, I didn't know what it was. And I didn't know if it was harmless or not. And now you're like, this and, is the best. And then when I'm in Vegas, I'm like, you know, when in Rome. And then I, yeah. And, <laughs> and now I, I lie. How far was the Vegas from the rehab? Years. 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 I still judged it for a long time. You just need to get off a of weed. This is the problem. This is You're not the weed. And then she's like, it's not the weed. She'll be high. I'm like, you, that's ridiculous. I didn't raise you like this. I would be crying. I would be crying. Oh, God. My poor kids. Yo, I'm fucked up. Yo, I ain't shit. That's crazy. But I didn't know. Yeah. I just did not know. No, nobody knew. I mean, I remember. I remember. Seeing cocaine, I mean, obviously, weed's totally different than this, but yeah, I just... not cocaine. I've never done no, cocaine. but I... Well, not that I'm judging it, but... Oh, I, I judge. You're terrible people. Uh, <laughs> I am a terrible... Was a terrible Have you person. done cocaine? Yeah, I've, done, I've smoked uh, crack. Oh, you smoked crack? How yeah. was it? It's an insane 15 to 17 minutes. The greatest feeling you'll ever know. What did you feel like? Uh, you feel like you're on a rocket ship. Like You, you feel like you're on a rock, like you just holding on? Well, you yeah, just, your body is like... Ah. And it's just like traveling up. Like you could just feel like you can accomplish anything and everything all at the same time. Really? Yeah. So crack is like. But it comes down. Crack is cocaine with meth. So well, crack, crack, crack is. is just an amp. Uh, crack mm-hmm. is just an amplified version of cocaine. Right. Which right. is why it's it only lasts. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't take it, but it was like, like baking, I can I can refer to my notes. It was baking soda and yeah, something yeah, it's like baking a Pyrex, ice and then the you. He did have some people do it in a coffee uh, pot. You could do it in Pyrex. You cooked it yourself? No, no, I didn't. But I'm okay. just saying those are the different I'm ways. I'm saying, damn, homemade I, crack. I, I come from a very, very <laughs> sketchy homemade background. Crack. Homemade crack is crazy. Okay. But it's very amplified. So you get that intense feeling but it, of like euphoria, but it only lasts a few minutes. Oh. Whereas with Coke, it will last hours. Uh-huh. So I've only ever done it once. It was one of those things where I did it, and it was like the experience was crazy. And then I was like, Oh, I know. Like, you cannot touch that again. Like, yeah. you'll go way off the reservation. Like, you cannot do that. Yeah. And so, but I remember the first time, and I'm saying this now, similar to the fact where it's like the first time I saw cocaine in college, mm-hmm. I was like, this is disgusting. This is deplorable. <laughs> like, you guys are all terrible. Like, throw this down the toilet. And I, because I was so scared, because again, I grew up in a similar time to you where it's like, no, any drugs is drugs. Right. Weed, coke, heroin, drugs all of is it drugs. is drugs. Mm-hmm. And it's all bad and it's all going to ruin your life. Ruin your life. And then fast forward. I'm fast doing forward. coke in South Florida. <laughs> like, this is awesome. Well, it's South Florida. You didn't have that much to do. It's hot. Yeah, it's, it's hot. Raining. There's a lot of clubs, a lot of partying <laughs> going on. Everybody's got all that 
discretionary income. Oh yeah, it, that's it, I would though. I would hate it to be in Florida and not have money because so many people go down there with retirement and yeah. all this extra money. It's a weird thing because I grew up there, so it was just home yeah. to me. Like uh-huh. I didn't. I grew up in Central Florida, but still, like Florida. But did was you grow just up with Florida. money? No, that's okay. the, like so. I had like two different kind of like like my dad was pretty well off, but it, it's still middle class, just maybe a little upper middle class. But then my mom, after the divorce, like lived in really shitty neighborhoods, so it was a very yeah. So much you was like, like back and forth. Yeah, you was like, mom, you need to get your shit together. Was, yeah. <laughs> You're picking wrong men. Like, how'd you get dad? Oh, she <laughs> did. She picked the wrongest, <laughs> the wrongest of men. She's not the only woman. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> We, we've uh, all done it. <laughs> you, can t- you can tell when you pick the uh, when you don't have a good picker, because then that's when you have all these beautiful women single as shit. They'd be like, "Nah, yep, my vagina next, sucks. Next, yeah, <laughs> something's off. Something. Mm, 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 my, my, my vagina like face tattoos. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> do you still like do you still like guys like face tattoo like buff like no my vagina does that's one okay, of my jokes that's... but no not me no i am i am not i don't want that Your i don't body want is i like, don't want the smoke but my, my body vagina's like, is telling me yeah yeah my vagina's like do you see him <laughs> his matches you literally just go i don't want the smoke <laughs> I don't know what that's like. I'm good. Smoke. I am good. His mattress is on the floor. A, yeah, but you see how you hot see he is? Him? He hates his mom. That's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> he hates his mom. It's crazy, but it's true. When you ask a guy about their mother, and I they're love like, my mom. Yeah, but when guys don't, when they're like, you, she, I, right, or, you know, I don't like to talk about her. <laughs> ah. That's when you ask the white guys, I don't like to talk about her. You're like, oh, wow. He want to put her in the basement. I'm out of here. <laughs> And Mama Jai was like, no, we're staying. We can fix him. No, you can't. If his mother couldn't fix him, we can't either. Yeah, a message for everyone out there. <laughs> if their mother couldn't fix them, walk Neither away. Neither can you, yes. God, so how did you get into whiskey? Uh, how did I get into whiskey? Oh, just, So you were, you were just, doing the edibles before you were drinking? No, I was drinking first. Okay. When that, did you, I was drinking when I was like, 30s okay. late 30s yeah not was, just a edible like not even like six years that's ago crazy <laughs> god your daughter is so yeah pissed. she is so pissed she's like i know you're not high sorry i but. know you're not high right now mom i know you're not high what the hell but i won't do it in front of them like i, I will hide you like, still- <laughs> like you high no my eyes red and shit huh coming home from the club like no listen, i was at work i was listen, at work my bills are paid yeah right <laughs> Don't you judge me. <laughs> Don't ask about my TikToks. My, t- my bills are paid. Hey, sorry. Yeah. When did you, so you started drinking in your 30s? Yeah, so whiskey. Uh, whiskey scotch. Okay. How did you find that? Um, just in law, uh, hanging with the that's, white boys. Yeah, that's and so, true. And what happens when you hang with the white boys? You got to, you know, you got to roll. Yeah. And what, I was, Rome, and, what gotta... I, and what I was noticing is that the next day after partying all hard and, you know, doing all that business stuff, they would just come to work and be cool. And I was like, I'm drinking the wrong stuff. Yeah. So I, I just started drinking whiskey straight, McAllen 12 neat. Wow. And then I was like, wait a minute. It's like it never happened. You could be dead. You could just, and you just wake up the next day after whiskey and it's like nothing. There's and not I, as much sugar as Right. And I don't shit. have a penis, so I don't have to worry about the whiskey. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It would just, it just worked. God, so you, so, cause you do, you work in uh, law. So you mm. ended up just, Taking on some of the stuff that yeah, they would I, do. I take on a lot of white men's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about I, it. I have a joke. I'm like, just to be a white man. Oh my god, if I could just invite that for one day, like for real. Oh my god, it would be so amazing. Because you're you're Change already the Nasdaq. I would, Ooh, you're already there. I'm getting a video. We would we would split that stock. We would figure it back out. I'd be so <laughs> fucking rich. I would be so. We would, I would get away with so much because now you don't really get away with that much stuff. I would you, I would yeah. insert my privilege if I was a white man. Like I don't. You know, people are like, oh, we'll be a, a lot run from it because we're like no don't blame me no but you don't really run from it you say you run from it you know it's the one of the greatest things that we can have why would you run from a privilege my kids have a privilege of me being their mom yeah right so they're going to take certain things for granted that's just what that is there is something i talk about this with my co-host on my uh, sports podcast Uh just from the press box my good friend joe dorville because I've been arrested eight times. You and, have? Yeah, and Joe's a, a, a black man from Atlanta. Do you, wait, wait. You've been arrested eight times? Yes. Do you have a criminal record? Yes. Very, okay. oh, I'm very surprised. So. I'm surprised. Well, that's that's the point. If like, you had a dad that was really wealthy, that wouldn't have happened. No, it wouldn't See, have I would assert my white man. You would you would have been good. I So <laughs> I left home at 17. Like I, when, I, when I got my Me first too, arrest, 18. I didn't even call. I didn't call any. Like, you know how in the movies they're like, oh, my, I got to call my mom or I got to call my dad. I was just like, all right. Bet when am I gonna get out of here? I Why? Because I didn't. 
I because I like left home and I was like doing stuff on my own and I kind of you was felt like, like you were a grown person. That and it was kind of like one of these things where it's like I made this mess, I'll clean it up. Like I don't. That's wa- how you felt. Yeah, I was like, I'll oh, just wow, figure it that's out. Crazy. I but I didn't come from a fa- like I come from a very loving family, but it was not a family where you would like call and be, like. And I don't know if it's me because of the guilt and shame or if it's just the way I was raised. But, like, you don't call and be like, hey, can you bail me out of this? Like, you oh. just figure – like, you got yourself here. Figure it out. Like, that's, oh, that's the way I how, was raised. Oh, I've never been arrested. Thank God. I mean, I probably was on a couple um, investigations. Yeah. <laughs> I saw my name in some paperwork. Snitch ass. Mother- but I- – <laughs> <laughs> I saw my name in some paperwork. I never forgot. I never, I, I, okay. I saw my name in some paperwork, but I've never been arrested. But I remember when my daughter was in college and they got into a fight or whatever and she was arrested and they called my ex-husband, right? And he, he thought that it was the feds coming to look for him. So he was like, I don't got no daughter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so then, so then, so then uh, I guess the arresting officer or whatever, she finally, my daughter finally gave my number up. Yeah. She was like, fuck that. I'd rather deal with his shit. Yeah. And my shit. I'd and rather then, not exist than deal with my mom yeah. on this. And then, and then the lady was like, the lady was like, "Are you the mom?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Because the dad, there's no way we will release her to the dad." <laughs> Did that make you feel good? Yeah, no, because I knew he thought that there was like the fast trying oh, to trick yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "No, they're just trying to get me." I was like, "Wow, that's." They so just funny. want me to come down there. Yeah, I ain't coming nowhere. <laughs> well, that was an interesting thing because I never, and I was talking to Joe about this mm-hmm. where. And all the arrests and everything, never once in my head was I like, did I ever think, oh, I could die? And really? like that, and Joe points it out, and it's very true. Like, that is the definition of like the white privilege. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but how I old never, were you, too? I was, my first arrest was at 20. Uh-huh. So between like 20 to 27. Okay, well, those later ones, <laughs> you yeah. had your full brain. Yeah. So, but like, at but the you t- was probably fully on drugs by but, then. Well, and I was like, I was, I was such a drinker and stuff that like I would like wrestle around, like I'd be like, get off me, and like wrestle around with the cops. And I remember I was the re- exactly. Joe had the same what? reaction. You would he wrestle was, around with a cop. Yeah, Joe had the same reaction oh, where he was God. like, "You're out of your mind." Superhero, what the hell's wrong with you? But that's to your point of like taking advantage of the privilege. It was just like, let's wrestle. <laughs> no way. No way. Wait, that's crazy. Okay, I got to yeah. put a little lip gloss on. There you go. Uh, no. Get it at <laughs> mainstage, onikamcleen.com. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just, it's yeah. a weird thing because, I mean, being arrested that many times, it, it, it is a weird thing because, like, you know you know me as me, like the nice. sober me, the yeah. sweet guy. I remember I applied for an apartment here, and mm-hmm. they didn't give it to me because my last DUI I got was, like, seven years ago. And they, they, were, they, they won't give you an apartment for a DUI. It came out because because it got because I had a DUI, the background check got flagged. Okay. Because it got flagged, they looked further into my background, um, and that was. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any felonies. It's all misdemeanors, but it's uh, like a lot of. Unlike it, Donald Trump. Oh. Aww. Thirty-four. I know. Can you <laughs> Two shots that? to your head. Pull, pull. That's white privilege. What are you talking that, about? That's, that's the. That's the epitome of what white privilege because is. Because now he's like got a bigger like his base it's not is him like, it's white men it, it, the only people the that base. can do that is white men you know what i mean anika you should tell them you it, should tell them what the it is the only person that's gonna get away with that ever is a white man there's never gonna be a situation that's gonna be this indian guy just you know <laughs> on epstein's <laughs> island able to just get away with shit like that no. maybe some chic in in dubai but that's yeah we're not gonna hear that even on the news no <laughs> So everyone's dead. So the white privilege is, is that that's what we, it is. Yeah. I mean, that guy's fucking nuts. Who, Donald Trump. Yeah. He's just a gangster from New York. He's just a gangster from New York. Like you can't help it. Like, like people always say, are you a little aggressive? And I'm not aggressive. I mean, I could be, but I so tam- temper myself and yeah. tame it. But it's, it's the, it's the beat of New York. Yeah. Does he, that, does that affect just, you at your, at your job with, with, at the law firm? Like, Does do it you affect have, me? Yeah, like, no, you, I need to be aggressive. Okay. I think I, 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 I'm in litigation. Yeah, we're going to fight all the yeah, time. Yeah. So you got to be able to argue your point. Yeah. And then I'm from East New York, and I grew That's up in the I'm, projects. <laughs> I'm gonna argue my point. Just and then I'm a shit. single mom. I'm gonna argue my point. I'm 411. I'm gonna argue. I'm a black lady. I'm gonna argue my point. I am the epitome of what arguing your point looks like. It's like in this a dictionary. Is your point. 
argue your point, even if your point is wrong. Because a lot of times I don't even do no research. If they made an Inside Out three and there was a character that was arguing your point, you would play. It would that be this like, anyway. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, and then what the hell did you? Say? I know. I know. Wait. I, this. That's where you got me effed up. Like is that? But I just keep it inside. I keep it. I keep it so <laughs> tempered. It's, I would love to see. If I, I could say the things that I want to say, yeah. it's so crazy. But I wouldn't have any friends. Just some six year old white guy, like yeah. lawyer, and you're like, are you? Have you lost your mind? Yeah. Yeah, it's that? like, did you pee your pants? <laughs> like, I would just say something crazy. I'm like, I smell pee here. Is you there peed. pee in here? You peed. Who farted? And I would love to say, <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine being in a meeting like, who far- Who let one go? Who let one go? I would love to do that, but I can't. So I just, I just, put, it's inside. I would love to do a story. I, w- I would love to write. Maybe I'll write something where I really talk about what my inner voice is really saying. Yeah. Because right now I'm talking to you, but she's like, hold your stomach in, bitch. Sit up and I'm like, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, all right. Shirt, she's, like, she's, like, she's like, cross, cross your feet. All right, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot. I, does that does the inner monologue? Because it happens on stage a lot for me too. Yeah. Does it do it on? Does it yeah. happen on stage? My, my inner monologue is like, why are you rushing? Yeah. Damn, nobody heard that. Damn, you sound illiterate. That's exactly <laughs> let, what happened let, last night. Let's hear about fitting into stereotypes. The angry black lady, <laughs> and I'm like, and the, did, do they know you went to college? I don't think not from this set. You were like, damn, her grandma is more than your your mother's mother. You like, you can. You can pause. Like it's bad. My inner monologue. Oh is my bad. god, mine was mine was wild last night. I was doing a show and I was like, I rushed because I I, just, I was like, oh, I'm gonna open with something different than what I normally open with, and because it felt uncomfortable, like it felt unnatural, I rushed it. Mm-hmm. And it literally, why are you rushing? Talk yeah. slower. Why are you just standing? Move around. Look uh-huh. at the audience. Talk. And I'm like, chill out, everybody. Yeah. And they're like nobody's saying nobody's anything. Saying I'm like, sorry, anything. it's up here. Like it's me. Like, calm down. I know you want the best for me. <laughs> Just calm. But right now down. is a little too much. <laughs> God. So you've been. Do you, you? So you've been in New York since what you said, fourth up, grade. Yeah. I grew up here. So, is there? Is, since I was two, I came here on a watermelon truck. <laughs> I did. Oh, that sounds. I, I don't even like telling that because that sounds like coonish. But it was. But, but but I'm sorry. But you can't be a coon if you're black. But anyway, it is. But it's the story. It's the truth. Make him a clean ever. My <laughs> my 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 mother's cousin Bobby used to come to New York and and sell watermelons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I was living with my grandmother down south, and she needed somebody to bring me to New York. And so he was doing his run, and they took me up here when I was like six. This is the opening scene of the movie. Six in a watermelon truck, and I remember just a little girl with pigtails remember, in a watermelon truck. I didn't out. have any hair. I wish I had pigtails. It was like so bald. <laughs> anyway, when just this boy, had a little girl, right? And I had like these little things, and and I remember Bobby driving, and his his partner had a dead eye. And the whole time I just watched this little man's dead eye because I've never seen it before. Yeah. It just kept on like rolling around. What? And, it's, and they were all acting like it wasn't rolling around. And you know, a little kid like. What's going on? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with his eye? It was so crazy. God. He just rolled around. So then you came up here. Leave it down. Oh, I'm just gonna doing leave it whatever. Down. Uh-huh. I just, I like him. This I don't is... know why it's not standing up. When did you, um, you said you went to, obviously you went to college. Uh-huh. Where did you go to college? Um, I went to community college. I went to city college. Okay. Uh, New York City College of Technology. Okay. And then I studied law there, law uh, and legal studies. Did you? So when you went to college, you weren't like obviously from what you said about drinking when you're 30 and then getting into weed when you're in your 40s. You were just. I was like, already in college though. I had already had my degree before I started doing any of that. No, stuff. but that's what I'm saying. So when you were in college, because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna go to college and party and get crazy. I had two kids. Yeah, you weren't doing any of that. I had to take my two kids to college with me. I had to pick that college because they had daycare downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, my life was hard, yo. I'm telling you. I picked it because it had daycare downstairs because I was already working a job and yeah. they were in school in Manhattan. So I needed to bring them to school, go to work, pick them up, take them to college with me, and then we went home. You were the epitome of like strong, independent person. No, it was like I it was when I realized when I got my brain in my frontal lobe finally they developed. I was like, I was like, yo. I'm going to be a loser. 
<laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I was like, yo, I have a GD. I, I, I'm married to a drug dealer. I have two kids. Like, if you look at this on paper, it's like, not great. this yeah. is not great. So this you is not decided great. To make a change. So I was like, I got to change this up. So then I just started going about life trying to. And that's why I move so fast now. And people are like, you, are you not tired? And it's not that I'm not tired because I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm freaking exhausted. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired all the time. But I always think back to I had two kids and I went to college with them and I got my degree with them while they were going to gifted and talented schools, not in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that. Oh, this is easy. Yeah. yeah I feel like that's how you build self-esteem because you do a hard thing right you do a hard thing and then you come out on the other side of it and you can always reference those times i say and, yeah you're 100 yeah. percent right i say it all the time with people that i work with in sobriety where mm -hmm. they're like because i i say this all the time i used to drink if i got like a bad schedule at work yeah like if the schedule came out and i was like three closing shifts blah 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 and i'd start right. drinking Just so pissed. and then once i got sober it's like you like you said you walk through little things and then bigger things and then some of the biggest things and then you look back and like if something happens you go yeah but i got through that i got through that i can get through this this is nothing yeah i mean not that it's nothing because it's all about your energy and your mm -hmm. feelings on it and it feels big in a moment but i always can think back and say this is not hard harder than trying to teach arithmetic to my kids while i'm while working, working while i'm working overtime so yeah. that i could you know yeah buy extra books or whatever it yeah. was and i for school and i was like and i was able to do all of that and not that i didn't get any help because my my little brother who was like 17 years younger help and and but for the most part i did that stuff like just me and, Solo, them and baby. jesus right and so that was the hardest thing that I could have done. So now I'm like, I can work a job in the daytime and do comedy at night, and yeah. I can do comedy in the like, capacity. This is easy. It's not really easy no, because it's, not, cause it's what I want. Yeah. Before I was just doing what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I went to college because I was like, I know I had to change my life. Uh, my daughters went to gifted and talented schools because I knew I had to make sure that they had a different environment than I had. Yeah. I had to, had to, had to, because I had made all these bad decisions, you know, before. Oh, I know. Leading yeah. Up. Yeah. And then it's like your next move has to be the right move. So I did everything that I had to do. And now comedy is something that I want to do. Yeah. And so it make it puts you in a much more vulnerable place. Yeah. Yeah. God, I could talk to you for hours about this. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Plug everything one more time. Okay, guys. So my comedy special is coming. I was called My Time. And My Time is just because it took so goddamn long <laughs> for me to figure it out that this is my time. It was the kids' time. It was my ex-husband's time. It was, it was my mother's time. My father. It was all the people's time. And now I'm putting myself first and so that you guys can enjoy it and judge it. So it's called My Time. And it's coming out August 1st. Please check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, main stage is about using your voice because I feel like in life – I have not used my voice on so many levels, but when I found comedy and it was able to amplify the things that I was saying, even the stuff that sound dumb, I was like, wow, it's still my dumb thought. And that's, it's mine and I get to own it. And I feel like everybody should have that People experience. Yeah. And so that's why this is shaped like a microphone because everybody should use their voice. So get, you can get it on Onika And, um, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. And Edinburgh. So, uh, yeah, so it's going to be personal. So, so that's like my mini one-woman show that I'm doing with my homegirls. And, and we're circling about New York. The train, me taking my kids from East New York and school and all that stuff. And just... And I, I'm a character actor, too, so I'm going to do um, my character, this, who is Old Dog, is this, like, ghetto guy from old school Brooklyn. Goddamn right he is. Yes. And you know so crazy? Because... I developed him during the pandemic and I was trying to get over something that I was dealing with with my ex-husband. He had went to jail and he was coming back from, from jail or whatever. And I, and I just felt that, like, what it would be like to be him. Like, he seemed like he just has, like, a fucking awesome life. He always gets in trouble, but he gets himself out. And then I just did him one day. Just started and then I was like, <laughs> And I was like, it's a freedom in it. A freedom of a person that just like, eh. 
It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because I'm this wild I cannot up. handle people who are like that. I have, I've had, <laughs> had people like, like that yeah. in my life. Where You're they're like, like what whatever. What and you like, going to do? What do you mean, whatever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, that's, but that kind of person must exist. And I just needed to, like, not forgive, but I just needed to accept yeah. who that person was. As opposed to trying to change it, so and then I just came out of char- I got a character with it, which I'm gonna do in Edinburgh. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Uh huh. French, shout out to French Festival. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank I can't tell you, you how grateful I am. <laughs> Thank you everybody so much for listening at Brennan T Comedy on all social media, BrennanTComedy.com, and we'll talk to y'all next week. Next week. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs>